This is a Flat Earth Theater production of Fine Tuned Universe, a science fiction radio play by A. Lermit. For more science fiction readings, check out our friends at Catalyze Playwriting Group, presenting new 10 minute plays in their series, Genie and the Machine, streaming right after this event at 8 p.m. Details are in the chat. And now, don't touch your radio receivers while we bring you Chapter 1 of Fine Tuned Universe. You need to hook it up properly or else the boot won't knock over the pail. That's the problem most people seem to have. Yeah, I bet. And you need the ball to roll down the ramp and knock another ball in a tub and then there's a toy soldier that needs to land in a, a bucket. It's a lot of little fiddly pieces, Mal, any one of which can fail. So it's a um, Rube Goldman machine. It sounds like a pain in the ass. Rube Goldberg machine. What did I say? Rube Goldman machine? Yeah, well, you know what I mean. I can't believe you've never heard of Mousetrap. Yeah, sorry, we weren't a Friday night board game kind of family. Still, it's in the zeitgeist. For children. In the 1980s. 60s. But everybody knew about it. Jane. I still played it before. Sure. Richard, how are you coming with the printing? Just putting the last few pieces together now. You ever play this game, Dick? What, Mousetrap? Oh, yeah. Played a ton of board games when I was a kid. Start looking through the catalog of other games. There's some choices. Uh, we're pretty good if we want to do more. Yeah, why this game, then? Why Mousetrap? Yes, it sounds lame. Oh, you don't even know. It's like the epitomic 3D printable game. Oh, I don't get it. It sounds like a dumb kid's game. Why not just print Monopoly or something? Sure, but... Mousetrap is all about the pieces, not the cards. It, there's no challenge in just printing a ton of cards and fake money and garbage. You've you got to get to think about the little itty-bitty pieces. Exactly. Why 3D print something that isn't about the pieces? No, oh, I forget who I'm talking to sometimes. Oh, yeah. Scientists love a game you have to build first to even play. Keep your mind sharp. Lots of little details. <laughs> Ambiguous rules. Sounds like science to me. <laughs> For science. So you're playing? We'll see. She's playing. Mmm. Come on, it took days to print. What better do you have to do tonight? You don't even know if they're gonna get the thing to work. Lieutenant Pfeiffer has some plan Bs in case... In case... In case it doesn't work right in this gravity? No reason it shouldn't work in 60% gravity. Well, maybe... Except maybe the toy soldier part. <laughs> we can add weights to the pieces if there's any... Uh, you know, finagling to do. You go finagle. I've got work to do. On it, Chief. They haven't even checked in yet today. You've got nothing to do. Exactly. It's not normal, and I've got to watch this thing until they... They'll check in whether you're at the communication center or not, Mal. I've got cabin fever up to my eyeballs and nothing to do until we get the latest batch of data processed and Mousetrap is printing faster than that, so... I don't like that they haven't checked in. Chief Spindler's usually very punctual. How late are they? Two hours. Eesh. Yeah, eesh. Is something up with the satellite connection? Not on our end. Uh, connection's strong, my messages are going through... They're just not answering. Solar flares, or could be CMEs? Hmm, maybe. What's the worst solar flares could do? Uh, a good amount. Um, affecting wireless communication is basically a given. Now, could you just stop breathing down my neck? Is the exercise uh, exercise bike free, or is Commander Andrea still using it? Take a wild guess. Really? Still? She's still getting her moon legs under her. So get the hang of things soon. Wait. Moyer Base, this is Arrowway Station. Chief Reese speaking. Come in, please. Moyer Base. Chief Spindler, are you there? Nothing. Oh! Oh, man, I was supposed to talk to Sammy today. It's his first day of school, and you know he doesn't cope well with new people. That sucks. My first day of school, I pitched a tantrum so massive I threw up. 
See? Those are exactly the life-defining moments I'm missing out on every minute we don't get this connection through. He'll understand. At that age, you just don't have the frame of reference. Heck, I had to explain to my kids and had to use, like, ten visual aids to get them to barely parse that we can't see them, you know, the Earth, from this side of the moon. But deep down, they know that's not the important part. Trust me, I'm a mom, therefore I'm an automatic expert in all things. Yeah, well, I would love to tell them all that, but Moira's got under half an hour if we're going to hear from them at all today. It's a rough life we've chosen, but it's got a heck of a view. Ah, fuck the view. Put a little blue marble in that sky. That's a view. Shut up. I love this view. Nah, give me Moira any day. Boo. We're back on the ISS. Do you know how many hours you can just... Stare at the Earth? I wouldn't know. I've never been to Moira. Or the ISS. Oh, I probably logged weeks just doing that. Staring. I can see the appeal, but... Hell, give me life on the ground. Lots to look at on the ground. Grass? Earthworms? <sighs> Come here. What? Look. Look out the window here. Doctor. Look at this vast, teeming canvas waiting for a paintbrush. I've seen the stars before, Jane. I've been staring at them all afternoon. It's not just stars. It's everything. Earth schmirth. I have a billion Earths in that sky. A billion galaxies with a billion Earths and a billion new discoveries entirely alien to us. It's so mind-blowingly huge I could just cry. Hell, I have cried. The odds of us finding any You care about that? Then what do you... I'll probably never find anything, and... Whatever, but I'm still devoted to them. I'm not sure any astrobiologist really cares about meeting another life form. Okay, that's a lie. That'd be the bomb.com. But anyway, we get off just thinking about ways, you know, to quote the great Jeff Goldblum, life uh, finds a way. Whatever. What's up with you? Oh, this stupid radio. Come on. Sorry, this thing just has me on edge right now. Poor baby. It's nice being up here and all, but I guess. If you could do it again, where would you be right now? Easy. I'd be up here. But the Elaurian array would start talking to me and I'd be at my console staring at, oh, pages and pages and pages and pages of data. Oh, that'd be the life. Now, why? Where do you be? Do I smell or something? No, <laughs> you're fine. What about you, Dr. Barthelme? This is assuming the mission is finished? This is assuming the mission never existed in the first place. Well, then I have to invent the mission and blast off up right here. Oh, for fuck's sake. What? Oh, you two are definitely conspiring now. What can I say? Great minds. Think best on the moon, apparently. <laughs> There's tons of radio astronomy work planet side. Nah, I'm done with Earth. It's not compelling anymore, you know? <laughs> no, I guess you don't know. Family types. You'd just be a hermit living out in a cabin in the woods if you could, huh? I've done some of that sort of thing already. Hawaii and Chile, working their radio telescope arrays. I was supposed to be on a team to put an array in Antarctica. Oh, I couldn't do that. What? Go work in Antarctica? Yeah. Too cold. It is. <laughs> Hypocrite. But there's penguins. You can't tell me you don't want to hang out with penguins. But to be in the middle of nowhere for so long, no thank you. And yet here we are. I smell a great big hypocrite. Yeah, trust me, I know. I could stay up here for years. Maybe I will. <laughs> what would that do to your body? <laughs> Let's find out. Maybe it'll be an improvement. Heck, what'll that do to your mind? Yeah, same answer. <laughs> I could see someone saying maybe that at Moira Base. See the Earth, be able to communicate whenever you wanted. But Arroway? The radio telescopes work better here. Less interference. Oh, baloney. You know, the one thing that does suck up here is the hiking. You start feeling cooped up and you just want to go for a walk, but it's a whole song and dance to get suited up. And the gravity changes everything. And you can't go very far. Well, you shouldn't. That doesn't mean I don't. Barthel May. No, I've been good. I, I know where I am at all times. 
But that's the thing I miss. Maybe birds. Birds are fun when they're hiking. Thanks. <laughs> Get to see more than the same three or four people. No, that doesn't bother me. I want something done right, I usually end up doing it myself. Don't trust Pfeiffer with the data stream either, huh? He's only been here a week, Chief. Lieutenant Pfeiffer is supposed to be very good. Mm, that's what you all keep telling me. Personally, I'll believe it once I see it. You're just saying that because you're a stubborn old fart. Hey, he's got a resume the length of my arm and your arm combined. Yeah, sorry, but this um, stubborn old fart isn't going to be impressed by the guy until he does something impressive. And honestly, he's kind of a weirdo. He's an engineer. They're all a little eccentric. Yeah, I doubt that. Oh, I hate to break it to you, but we're all fucking weirdos. But if I have to be cooped up here with you folks, you're the weirdos I'd ask for. That is high praise coming from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, check it out, Moon Children. The mousetrap works. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> I think the whole thing should run without a ton of adjustment. Sweet! Red Leader, this is Gold Leader. I'm coming in hot. See what I mean? He's just having fun. I hear you, Pfeiffer. Go ahead. Hi, Chief. Uh, say, is Dr. Weathers with you? Yeah, she is, Lieutenant. What's up? Salutations, good doctor. Now, don't kill the messenger, but we just hit a snafu with the fanny pack. A snafu? What do you mean, a snafu? Like, something's going wonkyville. You know, a snafu. We know what a snafu is, Pfeiffer. Well, it's mostly working, but it's suddenly not processing the buffered data from the array. How is that mostly working? That's all it's supposed to do. What can I say? Something borked it. When? Just now? Uh, sometime this morning, but I've been working on it for the past hour. Are you kidding me? We're like 20 feet away, and this is the first you're telling us? Well, I thought I could... And we were just making this stupid mouse... Thingy? Hey, now, don't bring the mouse thingy into this. That's not its fault. For God's sake, Gordon, didn't I tell you to all this time? And, and for an hour! Yes, you did say that, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, he says. Listen, I'm still running around in there myself, but you might want to, um... What are you doing to it? Oh my God, my babies, I'm coming! You know how she is, Lieutenant. You better not be kidding around. Would I ever kid around... Oh, for crying out loud. Is it salvageable? More than certainly. But I don't think there's going to be a lot we can do until we're connected with Moira. Any movement there? Oh, uh, not a peep. Well, keep me informed. They're going to want to weigh in. Roger that. Au revoir, mon capitaine! Resume as long as my arm, huh? I'm just saying. Say what you want. I'm saying that things are running smoothly before he and Andreas got here. <laughs> wow. What alien curled up your button, laid eggs? Oh, between them and this radio silence from Moira and you scientists pushing your board games on me. You know, I'm starting to think your mousetrap will be the best working tech on the whole moon. I think that is a compliment. Oh, the fun we have a million miles from the nearest pizza place. 200,000 miles. 238,900 miles, give or take an inch. But who's counting? I'm counting. And I have a job to do. I need to get in contact with them. And say what? No update here? How about that sports ball? Go home team? Ra ra ra. Well, I can't rightly do my job if the link is down. Whee! And knock that off. <laughs> I like it. Ugh. I built it. It's cool. Shove me out an airlock if this isn't cool. All right, come here. Hey, 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 hands off. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, Alice. Bang, zoom, straight, straight to, to the, the moon. moon. <laughs> See, you don't have to be a stick in the mud all the time. Well, that is the last time I get between Weathers and her toy. Hey there, moon children. Commander, Lieutenant, I take it Jane is pissed. Super pissed. She kicked us out of the science center. Thought we were getting underfoot. She thought you were getting underfoot. I'm just an innocent bystander. Did you finish on the exercise bike, Commander? I call dibs next. All yours. I wiped it down all for you. Don't I feel special. So what's the deal with the fanny pack? It should work. We're going to try it again, and it should go through this time. It just takes forever. What if it fails again? Is there some other thing you can try? In tandem with running it again? 
no reason it shouldn't work. Except apparently it doesn't. Yes, except apparently it doesn't. But I optimized the compression algorithm, which should clean up the download process. Don't you go dropping frequencies on me. You know that we want all of them intact. And you will have all the hundreds of millions of frequencies your little heart desires. Trust me, it'll be aces. I want you to have a backup plan ready, just in case. I'll have a backup plan when I need a backup plan. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> I've got a handle on it, Doctor. It'll work. Well, keep us apprised. What's the status from communications? Moira hasn't checked in yet? Gee, everyone keeps asking me that. You think it's like my job or something. It is your job or something. What's the latest? A whole lot of nothing. How many millions of dollars of equipment went into this place and nothing works? Windows gonna be closing soon, not a ton I can do. You've been putting messages through? Like every five minutes, radio and computer both. Yeah, let me see. Hey! Signal looks strong. I told you there is nothing wrong with the signal. Look. Come in, Moira Base. We're running out of time over here. This is Moira Base. Sorry about that, Arroway. Things are crazy over here. They seem to be right there, Chief. It took them long enough. Copy that, Spindler. Connection is live. Have you been receiving me? I hear you loud and clear now. Seriously, ask them where they've been all day. Can you let me talk? Let her talk. It, it, you too. Do I step all over you when you're doing your job? Spindler, is Planet Side Connection live? I know the window is pretty short at this point. Uh, sorry, no. Lieutenant, get Dr. Weathers in here. Oakley, Oakley, Commanderino. What's going on? We were supposed to have an Earth check-in. Sorry, we've been having a lot of issues today. Yeah, like checking in with us for one. You know how it is on the far side of the moon, out of sight, out of mind. Dr. Bartholomew, zip it. Is everything all right over there? That's still unclear. We're working on it. How can we help? Reese, the Earth isn't responsive. I don't understand. What does that mean? We're trying to get in touch, and they haven't answered in over eight hours now. We've been running around like chickens with our heads cut off. Uh, uh, hi, Spindler, uh, Commander Andreas speaking. Have you been able to determine any reason? Nothing firm. At the moment, there's no real reason to worry. We've gone periods out of communication before. They just usually give us a heads up when it's anticipated. Okay. Thank you. Any changes to the mission? Uh, no. This shouldn't affect you guys right now. We're just a little frazzled over here. I'm sure you're doing fine. Thanks. What's going on? Um, communication is down with Earth. What? How? They're trying to figure that out. Is it because of the solar flares? Have they checked that? Hi, Dr. Weathers. Yes, we've been looking into the solar flares, but we're not even sure what needs to be done. Uh, hey, Chief Spindler, it's Lieutenant Pfeiffer. Have you tried rerouting through a different- I'm sure they have things uh, under control, Lieutenant. We're pretty sure that whatever it is, it's on their end. All we can do to, is wait to see if they get it fixed themselves. Sorry, are you guys all right? I know we left you in the lurch for a bit there. Uh, yeah, not a ton going on here otherwise. Yeah, we're all fine, Chief. I'm confident you'll get this figured out. Thanks, Commander. We've got an update on the data transfer, actually. The lieutenant and I are going to rerun the... Doctor, we can wait on that. They've actually got enough on their plate right now, it sounds like. Yeah, I agree. We'll get your report when things are up and running again, Doctor. I trust you'll take copious notes for us. Oh. All right. Anyway, until we learn more, just hang tight and we'll check in later. Yeah, make sure that you do. We're even more in the dark than you are. Literally. It's a sunny day over there and we're going to be in the gloaming for another day. I didn't catch that. The gloaming? I I'm being poetic. I mean, it's dusk here. Never mind. Forget it. Anything else, Spindler? Not really. I'll make sure to check in next window. It's just a little nuts. We understand. Don't worry about us. Let us know if there's anything we can do to help. I'd be happy as a pig in mud to walk you through anything technical. Appreciate it, Lieutenant. We'll let you know. Thank you. Over and out. Over and out. What the hell does all of that mean? Uh, uh, probably nothing. It happens sometimes. Planet side, they have to install updates or something and have to reconnect or solar flares, what have you. Well, I don't like the sound of it. I've worked with Spindler and the Moira team for years. They can 
Get this squared away. There's nothing we can do from here, but keep on carrying on. We've all still got jobs to do. That we do. Gordon and I have plenty to keep busy at the moment with the fanny pack. And board game knife. Oh yeah, that's still on like one. Lieutenant, can we finish setting up the data transfer? Hang on. I was thinking, actually. Oh, here we go. Chief, let me try a little something before the window's closed. I want to see if we can bypass their connection and patch to Earth directly. I doubt we'll get anything if Moira's been having so much trouble. I have a sneaking suspicion that maybe we can get through if I remote hook up through their systems. Something like this, and... Here you go, Red Leader. Give this a listen while we're still live. Okay. Yeah, I'm not finding anything either. Uh, Arrowway to station to mission control. This is Chief Reese. Are you receiving me? No. Nothing. Curious. Yeah. I really don't like the sound of it. Tune in next week for Chapter 2 of Fine-Tuned Universe. Thank you for joining us for this virtual event. While the shadow of the ongoing COVID-19 crisis darkens our stage for the time being, Flat Earth Theater is over the moon to be able to bring a small piece of that stage to you, and we look forward to seeing you in person again soon. If you enjoyed this performance, please consider supporting local artists with a tax-deductible donation at flatearththeater.com slash contribute, or click, button, uh, click the button in Facebook Live. Flat Earth Theater is a federally recognized nonprofit 501c3 corporation. Fine-Tuned Universe was written by A. Lermit for Flat Earth Theater and directed by Jake Scaltrito. The cast featured Juliet Bowler as Chief Mallory Reese, Kristen Heider as Dr. Jane Weathers, James Hayward as Dr. Richard Dick Barthelme, Chris Champa as Lieutenant Gordon Pfeiffer, Melissa De Jesus as Commander Marina Andreas, and Liz Salazar as Chief Bettina Spindler. Sound effects were designed by James Rossi, with technical direction by Lee Downs. For more information about Flat Earth Theater, visit flatearththeater.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. For more science fiction readings, check out our friends at Catalyze Playwriting Group, presenting new 10-minute plays in their series, Genie in the Machine, streaming right after this event at 8 p.m. Details are in the chat. Thank you for listening. Our communication window is now closing. Over and out. <laughs>